if you're not willing to die for your wife like Christ died for the church, and I'm not saying that we have to go out and, and, and just lay our lives on the line or lay ourselves on the railroad tracks or anything crazy like that. No, what I'm saying is, is that you have to love your wife in such a way that is sacrificial, even to the point where you would, you would sacrifice your own body, your own well-being for hers. Amen? Now, if you are willing to do that, then you should expect your wife to line up and, and, to, uh, and to submit as in verse 24, where, um, where the Apostle Paul is saying, so let the wives be subject to their own husbands and everything. Amen? It's an, it's an interdependent thing. Amen? So there, submission. Submission is key. Husbands must submit to their wives in the construct of, of marriage and, and, and in a sacrificial sense, and wives must be sacrificial, uh, is, must submit to their husbands in a sacrificial way as Christ, as the husbands do as Christ did. Amen? Now, the successful start to a marriage, the first successful um, beginning to a marriage is that a man should have work before he has a wife. Amen? Listen, if, if, if a, a, a man is created to work, he's created to work. God gave man work before he gave him a woman. Hear me now. He gave him work before a woman. Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and keep it. He had a job. He had to name the animals. He, he, had, he had other tasks that, that God gave him that are probably not recorded in Scripture. Amen? There was a lot of work to do. But there, there was work before there was a wife. And now, let me just kind of segue again because there's, I, I, I said work and not a job. There's a difference between work and a job, and there's a whole other teaching that I have uh, written out on that. Uh, work is what God gives you. Work is when, you, when you're operating in your element, when you're operating in your gifting, when you're operating in your purpose and your assignment, when you're walking out your destiny, you are working. And when you are working in that manner, it, it makes it seem as though you are, it is effortless. However, a job, no matter how gifted you may be for that job, a job will, will cause toil. It will cause suffering. It will cause, and, and, and let me tell you, a job is not conducive to marriage. Amen? Now, the, the second step to a successful marriage is this. God's plan is that he presents the woman to the man. He presents the woman to the man. I like to tell people that when, uh, when Angela and I met, that God presented her to me. He presented her in the context of a friend. He uh, presented her in the context of a lover. He presented her in the context of a companion and, as, and, and moreover as a wife. Amen. And, and when he presented her to me, I knew that she was the one. Now, is there any hard, fast rule for understanding this? No. This is why you have to be led of the Holy Spirit before you enter into the institution of marriage. Uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 22 puts it this way. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man made he a woman and brought her, brought her unto the man. Listen, God presents, but man finds. God presents, but man finds. You see, God is going to present the woman to you, but you have to have the sense of presence to find her. In other words, to recognize the woman that God presents to you. Amen? Now, that's, a, that's a heavy one to get. It's a mouthful, but listen, hear me. God presents, man finds, man recognizes. Proverbs 18 and 22 says, Whosoever findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor of the Lord. Now note that the good thing is the wife, the woman, not the man. Brothers, no matter how good you think you are, you're not the good thing in the context of marriage, okay? <laughs> Praise God. I mean, your wife may think you're a good thing, may think she has found a good thing, or may, she, may think that, that she's received a good thing from God, but the good thing is the woman. Amen? And Proverbs, Proverbs 31 and 10 says, 
Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. A virtuous woman. See, this is the thing. When Ladies, if you're wondering why, single ladies specifically, if you're wondering why you're not, you, you're not um, in the marriage covenant that you desire, look at your own character. Now, I'm, I'm not saying this in condemnation. I'm saying this in love, and, I, and I'm, not, I'm, I'm not even saying it as a matter of conviction, but just look at yourself and, and uh, examine yourself and say, am I virtuous? Amen? And if you want to know what, what a virtuous woman looks like, turn to Proverbs 31, and I'm just going to read one verse from that chapter. It says, who can find, a there's that word find again, who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies. A virtuous woman is rare and precious. Amen. I, I like to think of how uh, when, when God formed man from the dust of the earth, he made man from dirt, but he made the woman out of something more precious. He made the woman out of the finished product of the man. Amen. So it's like the woman is not made to wallow around in the mud and, and to work in the dirt like the man is. The man's made from dirt and he's drawn to it. Amen. That's why that's why we men like to work with our hands. Uh, we, we little boys like to play in the mud. Amen. But little girls they they like to they like to do things a little bit more uh, prim and proper because they're they're created from something more precious. Amen. Now, ladies, it, let me say this one last time: if you're single, ladies in particular, if you're looking for a man, you're out of order scripturally. Amen. Now, the fourth step to a successful marriage is this, that it requires emotional and physical contact. Emotional and physical contact. Listen, if you have a car and never maintain it, if you never change the oil, if you never change the transmission fluid, if you never um, have the, the, the necessary adjustments made to your car, eventually it's going to fall apart and stop working. Amen? Just like our, our relationship with our Heavenly Father, our relationship with our Heavenly Father requires that we, that we pray, that we praise, that we worship. And if we don't do those things, then our relationship becomes, it, it, it becomes stale from our end. Understand, it never becomes stale from God's end, but it gets stale from ours. And we wonder why do we do things? But the thing is that relationships require maintenance. Amen. First uh, Corinthians chapter seven, verses two and th two through four says it this way. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence and likewise also the wife unto the husband. The wife hath not the power of her own body, but the husband. And likewise, also the husband have not the power of his own body, but the wife. In other words, our bodies are created for our spouses. Amen. In the in the in the physical eros context of of relationship, and if you if you are not having this emotional and physical contact that's required by marriage, that's required by the covenant then eventually this marriage relationship is going to grow stale. It's going to grow old and, and, and it would not be pleasing and satisfying. 